My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are talking about cooling systems. So this is just a, a, a basic understanding of cooling systems, we will go into a lot more depth, blah 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 blah. So your cooling system you have a water jacket, you have a water uh, expanse in your head, so obviously, excuse me, that's your headline. Then we have an outlet, the outlet goes to a radiator which is just a load of fins and shouldn't be called a radiator. Then this goes back to a water pump and then the water pump sends it back to the cylinders. However, there is one thing that we are missing and this is what I want to talk about in this video. There is one thing we're missing in this entire system and the thing we're missing right here is a thermostat. So I'm not going to talk about how a thermostat itself actually works, that will be a separate video on its own. But this thermostat here, thermostat, is a temperature valve, that's all it is. It's a open and close valve that works on the temperature of the coolant. And the other thing we want to talk about quickly is the little holes in your gasket. So, I'll put that gasket. So this is a head gasket and you'll see, when you actually open your engine, you'll see that your water jacket passages are these big ribbon shaped jobbies. So you'll have a cylinder and then you'll have these big expanses and all engines have different size ones. Some engines have complete ones that go all the way around the cylinders like this and blah 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 blah. But you'll see on your head gasket that there'll be holes, just small ones. And in this case it's the ones with the sealant, black sections on. And you'll just have these holes and they're a lot smaller of these holes than the actual water jacket entire opening that you can see at the top. So we'll talk a bit about both. So how does your thermostat work in relation as the system? So when you've got your bike sat out there in the middle of winter and it's zero degrees Celsius outside, um, the coolant, the engine and everything is at zero degrees. Now we, because engines produce waste heat, um, heat that we can no longer uh, increase the pressure with or from one stroke to another we have to dissipate that heat so we can then you know rise the temp raise the temperature again so we can increase the pressure we need to get rid of some of this waste heat otherwise it'll go into thermal overload and it'll just have a runaway thermal jobby and then the engine will lose power lose power lose power until things start to melt so the way what we do is we use either we use air with air cooling we use the air as a conductor to basically take away the heat we pass the heat from the engine to the air, the air pisses off and then colder air come, is there in its place and we have a cycle that way. Then obviously if you want to make more compact engines or increase the power that an engine makes which means you need to increase the uh, thermal density and all the rest of it, um, you then need cooling. Air just isn't enough so we use water. We use water because water is an excellent thermal conductor and the amount of heat that it can absorb is one of the highest of any uh, chemical compound on it well, in the universe as far as we know so obviously we have the pump to circulate the in everything around the system and water goes into the jacket or there should be already water in the jacket now this water is the same temperature as outside and the rest of the machine which is at zero degrees the problem with using uh, running engines at zero degrees is the fact that the oil and other um, components that we have, there's thermal expansion and the engine gets hot anyway because of all this waste heat and the oil will not work properly at that temperature. We need the oil to be hotter um, to lower its viscosity so we can squeeze it between bearings and actually have it do its job, its intended purpose. So what we do is we have our water jacket and this absorbs any of the excess heat that we need to get rid of for the next stroke to come along and then obviously it goes into your head, it cools there because in your head for a four stroke or a two stroke um, that's very close to where the combustion process happens in your combustion chamber. Not only that is with four strokes, it's more important because we have exhaust ports and that is one of the hottest sections of the engine. So we have these uh, voids in your head to have cooling in your head. Now generally there are larger coolant passages on your exhaust side than they are on your inlet side because your inlet 
basically act, uh, acts as a cooler anyway uh, because of cold air being drawn in and so generally your intake side is cooler than your exhaust side for obvious reasons but we have a thermostat and why do we have a thermostat well what happens is is the impeller uh, of a water pump is what we call an open cell impeller which basically means that water will flow through it and you impart just like a turbo you impart um, energy you give energy to the flow of water to push it along however if there's a restriction for some reason and all this water stops it will not cause the impeller to stall the water can just flow around it or just stop completely and the impeller can basically just make a vortices it can just spin um, the water in a local region now there is viscosity losses and all the rest of it but that's why you have an open cell impeller and when you look at the impeller for your water pump compared to your turbo you'll notice the middle's missing and that's so we can just have this um, static not static but this uh, vertices so this thing can just spin away and just basically create turbulence inside your water flow but not actually apply a pressure to anything so what happens is is that this water's cold so this water's just say zero degrees and then your engine goes bang 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 and the uh, waste heat starts to accumulate inside the block i.e the block warms up the head warms up and eventually it'll transfer this heat to the fluid and your water that's in your water jackets then what happens is is when the thermostat is exposed to these temperatures it then opens you see if there was no thermostat and the people who take them out because they're dickheads what happens is, is you're actually doing more damage to your engine the water pump will pump water around this system so if it goes in here at zero degrees it might pick up five degrees and then it just flows straight back out again because the pump is pumping it no thermostat go into the radiator it'd cool down back to zero degrees go back in and your engine would never warm up and your oil viscosity will take forever to warm up this will take a hell of a long time I'm talking like 15 20 30 minutes um, it'll take an awful long time for the system to get up to temperature so a lot of wear is going on because the viscosity of the oil is too thick so what you do is you have a valve that closes this off which is a thermostat the thermostat closes off and waits until this rises this temperature rises and generally we're looking for about 117 degrees Celsius that's meh it you know fluctuates between engines and all this but this is actually quite a nice number and this is why your water system has to be pressurized because 100 degrees water boils until, unless you keep it pressurized if you keep the water locked in as water it, can't, it doesn't have any room to expand into steam so it just stays as water and then basically it flows into your head flows past your as soon as this opens it then lets the dog see the rabbit it lets the uh, water into your radiator your radiator cools it it cools it only by so much because you don't want to lose all of your heat this is why radiator sizes are very important the water is then pumped back and then flows back down to your pump your pump then shoves it back into here and then you have this nice coolant system and the coolant system there isn't there to just generally outright cool your engine it's there to maintain pretty much this temperature the optimum temperature that the engine was designed to um, operate at so the entire coolant system is there to maintain it and one of the other ways that it maintains it or the one of the ways that it maintains the flow rate which is also important is as your bike goes faster your impeller will go faster and basically you'll flood everything so fast around your system that there'll be an instability so what you do is you have small restrictive outlets these little holes that are inside your gasket and on this side it's only one two three four five six seven there's only seven in this head and this restricts the flow rate of how fast this can go around your system by using the gasket as an actual restrictor so obviously as soon as you get up to temperature your thermostat just stays open but it's these holes that restrict the rate of flow and your obviously like I say your impeller is designed so it's an open cell impeller so it can always just idle in a sense it can carry on spinning and not really impart much force to the rest of the system talking about maintaining um, this nice temperature this operating conditional temperature uh, if you watch the motorbike racing like world superbike or motor gp and stuff you will notice that in the rain when they race in the rain they actually cover 
nearly all or half of the radiator, they'll put a screen in front of the radiator or they'll cover it with tape or what have you and basically this just stops um, the volume of air that usually takes away the heat and because it's wet and because it's cold then the radiator will work a lot more efficiently, you'll get rid of a lot more heat and because you have you know, a water spray spraying your radiator because water is such a good heat conductor um, you would overcool your engine, the temperature would drop and then what happens is is that your oil viscosity goes down and you're more likely to bust something, break something due to wear or lack of oil, lack of lubrication. So you'll see in the MotoGP that they actually screen, they cover up most of the radiator, they'll have, I believe, a bit of it exposed. But they literally do an analysis, a thermal analysis of how this whole system works and say, well, we need to cover up 60% of the radiator. So that's just an introduction, we will do a video about how thermostats work, they're pretty low tech but pretty cool and we'll do impellers, water pumps, cooling and optimum temperatures and so on and so forth and I'll do some CAD stuff where we can look at um, the thermal uh, conductiveness and how all this system works. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.